Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm Jane Fonda. Welcome to the Graham Norton Show. some great guests on the show for you tonight. Really good. I think that's not always the case. I mean, not so long ago, I found a massive, disgusting wine stain on it. Yeah. <laughs> but now, I am sensing excitement in the room. Are you all excited? Yeah! And I think I know why. Yes, it's in another exciting week of Brexit talks. <laughs> They're going well, aren't they? Yeah. I tell you, they're saying now, if we don't get a deal, it could lead to planes not taking off, the country running out of medicines. I mean, who knew Brexit would be so difficult to organise? Well, that's right, everybody. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> everybody knew that. I'm not saying the EU are giving the UK a hard time, but here's Angela Merkel and Donald Tusk getting ready to meet David Davis. The day of Blackie Jackson. And listen, we've got a great sofa of guests for you tonight, including later a first time visit uh, to the show by Hollywood legend Jane Fonda. I know! How exciting is that? Uh, starred in so many of my favorite films, a producer, political activist. She even created the original workout video. Uh, I know! <laughs> because that video was so influential, it helped millions of women to get fit and developed right hand muscles in a generation of young men. <laughs> Music and chat from the Irish pop sensation, Niall Horn. Yeah. He'll be there. He'll be right over there. Right, let's get the first guest on. He went from banging drums and shooting stars to creating some of the most iconic sketch characters of all time in Little Britain. Here to talk about his new memoir, it's Matt Lucas, everybody. Breaking Bad. Now he's bringing a stage version of the classic film Network to the National Theatre. Please welcome Brian Cranston! Oh, yes, it is! Sacred Deer. One is the Golden Globe winning star of In Bruges and The Lobster. The other is the Oscar winning star of The Hours, Moulin Rouge and Big Little Lies. Please welcome Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman. my roommate I see you so often Nicole <laughs> I am on this show I think I'm one of the most frequently no seriously you're here a lot you're yeah after me the most often oh, person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really. um, now of course the two of you just come from your premiere yeah we at have. the London Film Festival yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have worn this even if I didn't have a premiere to come on this esteemed <laughs> show. Of course you would uh, listen we'll talk about the film in a bit but uh, this is an odd thing the couch of all Work together, Nicole and Matt. Yes. You've worked together. Yes. We... I've held a knife to your throat. Yes, you have. Wow. <laughs> Just yeah. before they came on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but only upside down. Upside down. I was yeah. upside down. We did uh, Paddington yeah. together. Are you in the sequel? No. Nor are am you? I. Oh. No. <laughs> You know, obviously didn't work then. No. Uh, there you are hanging upside down. Was that really you hanging upside down? Yeah, I think that's Look, me, yeah. yeah. Yes, I was worried. I was worried the blood was running to your head and you were going to get brain damage it, or something. It's... Oh, it did happen. It <laughs> <laughs> suddenly went off. But they did. They had you upside down for a long Quite time. Quite a while, yeah. And it's really, really hard to act upside down. It's really hard to remember. You should try doing an episode of this show upside down. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Let's start now. <laughs> no. Uh, but the two of you worked together in uh, Total Recall, yeah. the, the new Total Recall. Right? Yeah, the yeah. new, much better improved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to work with him. <laughs> Is that an Irish accent? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hybrid Irish Austrian no, hybrid. Doing the, the Austrian, yeah. 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 But, there was, but there were stunts in that film, but you, and you got injured. It's better when you don't say Well, I did get injured. You know, uh, do you rem I don't know if you remember this, oh, but. I'll never uh, forget. Uh, so we we did a, I, we were I was his antagonist and we were having this climax scene and and they, it was in a puddle. Careful! <laughs> I'm gonna watch this film again. Nobody knew about that. Well, we did 
two versions of the ending. Um, <laughs> one, happy one happy ending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was this pool of water about eight, nine inches deep. <laughs> just, just, just enough. And he just was, enough. He was, was all the way in there. <laughs> the show's just started. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jane Fund. <laughs> And we were wrestling and fighting and trying to knife each other to death. And they heated this water for us because we were in it for quite a while. But the problem was is that every crew member was also stepping in it. So they would come yeah. in, do makeup, hair, wardrobe, lighting. They would, the script person would come in, the director would come, all bringing their shoes into this pool of water. And we were splashing after splashing. Well, at the end of it, what happened was that I got pink eye <laughs> in both of my eyes. I got pink eye, and then he told me that he actually defecated in the water. <laughs> genius to, to foil your, your antagonist that way. You just see me now with my trousers around my ankle squatting saying, please, oh Lord, if you can hear me, give Brian Cranston pink eye. And he answered. I saw it. I went to see it in the cinema. You were very butch. Oh, thank you. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. It goes on general release on Friday the 3rd of November. And I have no idea how to describe this film. I've seen I've watched it. So, uh, But luckily I don't have to. You guys are here. Oh. Uh, off you go. Nicole, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I hung Rachel Weiss as well and we we're here with the lobster. <laughs> what do you think? What's it about? I don't know. Two hours. <laughs> I mean, it's called The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which already lures you in, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a director called um, Yorgos Lanthimos who directed Dogtooth and he directed The Lobster. And he's a very particular um, filmmaker and we both love him. Mm -hmm. And the film is is like nothing you've ever seen before. That is true. Kind yeah. of is, yeah. No, and even because I think if, if anybody saw The Lobster, I love The Lobster. It's very even that doesn't prepare you for this because yeah. it's... It is funny in parts, but it's it's dark. Mm -hmm. Well, he thinks he made an out-and-out -out comedy, doesn't he, the director? He's bananas. <laughs> well, they're, they're, I mean, he wrote the screenplay with his um, screenwriter. Right. Um, the two of them, um, you say... Ephthemus? Ephthemus is his name. I think. They're Greek. Philippe. They're both Greek. Philippe. And um, they won um, the screenplay award at Cannes. I think they won yeah. that for Lo The Lobster as well. They're wonderful, wonderful writers. Yeah. So. And you play a married couple, mm. and yes. you're a, a surgeon. Mm. Yes, a heart surgeon, cardiothoracic surgeon. And the film opens up with a... With an image on an image of a, of a heart filling the screen that's beating and they actually shot a real wow. live uh, oh my god triple bypass quadruple bypass on the day and they had yeah it was very bizarre I was there it was gnarly and it was, it looks amazing in the film. No, you know what he, he it. doesn't look well. No. Well, he signed uh, off on it, your man. Is he okay? Yeah, he made it. He's out playing golf. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> in Cincinnati. Um, but he signed off on it and he okayed it, and the operation was a massive success, and it was all we, in focus. And you were, did it smell of meat? Well, that's the thing. I mean, you walk oh. into a you walk into a barbecue restaurant and you smell burning flesh, and if you have any carnivorous inclinations, you go, ooh, mouth watering. This all smells really good. When you know it's a human being. Oh. It's not quite as... It smells like it's cooking. Well, yeah, because what they do is they, obviously, they, they cut the skin and then they start cauterizing the bleeding as it's going. And, but my favorite... Uh, Good noise. <laughs> my favorite, that sounded a bit fetishistic, but my favorite bit was when they, they sawed through the sternum. Oh, I can't Why were you there? <laughs> I was looking for directions to get out. <laughs> get the fingers in there. <laughs> Amazing. Like, mm. really disturbing. And the only person that couldn't leave, because we all took different turns to step out, because I went green. I thought, shit, I'm going over. And I could feel myself. I got very nauseous. But the only person that couldn't was the focus puller. In films, they have a focus puller who literally is watching the monitor. And wherever the focus is placed, they're moving a dial to keep the lens moving. To, and the poor fucking focus puller had to stay there the whole time. You just said... Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the poor focus puller was green. And he was... <laughs> You know, but, um, Did you yeah. say it was a quadruple bypass? Yeah, for such a thing. So it was only supposed to be a single one, but they had to do four takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching medical films because my, oh, my mother was a... Um, my dad was a doctor and my mum was a nurse educator. And they would come home and that's what we'd have to watch as kids. Oh, my God. Autopsies? Medical films. Really no, well, well, medical <laughs> films like... I can't hear it. <laughs> Literally, I was watching Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I learn about sex and everything from that. Ooh. They, would bring, <laughs> they would bring home, you know, films to, you know, to educate Medical children. Medical films. Yes, this yeah. is what happened. Okay, yeah. I believe you may have heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and we would sit and 
and watch. Really? You As know. a family, squirming with well, a parasite. Well, they were behind us and we'd be like... Oh, are you kidding? Oh and God. yeah, but I knew everything. I went to school with all the info. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's have a, a look at a clip. Okay. This is uh, the two of you attending a charity gala. The guy that made it told me what was in it. No, I can't remember now. But it is very refreshing. Would you like one? No, thank you. Let me try it. It's really delicious. You can use this straw. I haven't touched it. He hasn't had a drink in three years. High GGTs, elevated transaminases. Well, good on you for not drinking. Well, I would say no to a cocktail if you're offering. Of course, I'll get you one right away. We should go soon. Yeah, it's early. He's got surgery in the morning. He needs to get some sleep. It's still early. We've got surgery in the morning. Fine, okay. How are the kids? They're doing very well. Bob has started piano lessons. The teacher says he's very talented. Now we have to get him one so he can practice at home. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm renovating the clinic. I'm on the phone all day. Our daughter started menstruating last week. <laughs> yes, she's a little scared, but she's okay now. You haven't seen her in ages. Not since last summer at the school choir. Recite. You and Mary should come over one night for dinner. You really shouldn't stay late either. Drink that cocktail you ordered, get yourself home. You've got to be at the hospital in six hours. Time to go down? Yes. Good night. Good night, Matthew. mention uh, Big Little Lies yeah. and how great that was, yeah. how great you are in it. And uh, there you are. And the best actress at me, because that was a tough category. Unbelievable. I yeah. know. But I mean, I really feel like that Reese and I won that together because... Mm. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... I don't think she feels that way. <laughs> she, then, then we won. Stop it, Graham. Then we won. <laughs> but I mean, it really is. And any it's actor will tell you this. When you... I'm with him. Oh, I feel we won it together. And, um... I thought she won it. <laughs> you stole it. Yeah. Give it back. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> uh, we've got a picture. But because we produced it as well, and it was so much work to get it um, to the screen great. and then to have it sort of embraced in the way it was. So it, it really is ours. And also Laura's and Shailene's and, and Zoe. I mean, the five of us worked our butts off to get that thing nice. um, made and produced. And um, it's, it's been a fantastic journey. And we've got a picture mm -hmm. of you at the Emmys. There you are, being graduated oh, by Alexander Skarsgård. You uh, are so provocative, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you showing that? It's a lovely moment of celebration, I Nicole. I kissed my husband, <laughs> too. Well, then he is right there. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Keith is applauding the kiss. <laughs> Yeah, good kiss, guys. Well done, everybody. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm... I did kiss him because, but, but you gotta understand, I did everything with Ali. I'm like, you know, that. We that... saw it. <laughs> right, I'm back and I'll help you. I've got an amazing, say. supportive, gorgeous husband who I love more than anything in the world. And, and I gave Alex yeah. a congratulatory kiss, and he's like a a mannequin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The last time we were here, actually, Keith was here with you, and uh, he yes. was being very tight-lipped about your 50th birthday celebration. Oh, right. So what had he organised? Um, he did some fireworks and um, <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll draw a veil there. <laughs> a, a bouncy cons. <laughs> Castle, donkey rides, yeah, candy floss, <laughs> <laughs> balloon, balloon modeling. It's great. Uh, now, now, Brian, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Brian Branson, now you've been married, have you been married 30 years yet? Uh, not yet. Close. Very close. 20, 29. Never gonna close. make it. Never gonna make it. In your book, you, you tell a story of uh, young love. I think you were on your honeymoon in Europe. <laughs> yes. And you were on a, was it, you were driving but on a train. We went to our travel agent to talk about this. We were mid-30s when we got married, and we knew that we wanted to start a family. So this was like it. We wanted this honeymoon to be really spectacular. <laughs> Spent five weeks in Europe, and it was all over. So we started in Switzerland. We were going to rent a car and then go to Italy, and the travel agent says, oh, by the way, instead of driving around the Alps up and over, you take a train. It's a flatbed car. It takes three cars bumper to bumper on a flatbed car. And then they put, you know, you, and then you go through the Alps. By the way, he says, wink, wink, there are three tunnels. The first tunnel is about five minutes. 
The second tunnel is about eight to ten minutes. <laughs> the third tunnel is 50 minutes long. Oh. If you're a honeymooner, and I said, say no more. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> so I told my wife, and she exhaled and said, okay. <laughs> We're on the train. There's a, a van in front of us with a bunch of Italian families in front. And behind us, I mean, as close as you are, I can see the people behind us. Uh, two couples, two Italian couples. Uh, and so we, we start going and we go into the... And it's a massive experience, emotionally and physically. <laughs> and the wind is whipping through and it's pitch dark. You cannot see oh, anything. Wow. And it's, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And we come out of the tunnel into the station. And I say to Robin, that's one. <laughs> we go up, we start again, we go through the second. <laughs> it's dark, can't see anything. We come out of it, that's two. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> start the third tunnel, wait till it's absolutely pitch dark. Here we go. <laughs> it's a small rental with a stick shift, and I'm like trying to get my trousers off. <laughs> She's trying to lower her chair. <laughs> And we can't see anything. You cannot see anything. So it's all by feel. And it's, it's awesome. And Amazing. one thing I learned for sure is that never be completely nude when transferring from one seat over the stick shift. <laughs> Keep your trousers on and, and, and do it afterward. And you can't. Well, you know. See, funny, I would recommend it, but that's not true. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, you're right. So we are in flagrante, as they say, and uh, I don't know where to put my hands or something, and my wife is just, come on, just, you know. Now, what's happening is that uh, my eyes are adjusting. I can see her profile, she's a beautiful woman, love her with all my heart. And I could see her, and it's her pretty face, and it's great, and I think the eyes are, are getting, <laughs> no, the eyes aren't getting used to total pitch black. What happened is that we were coming to a station, and we did, boom, sunlight, everything. <laughs> now imagine, I'm like this, right, on top of my head, and I can see the, the two couples, the Italian couples in, in the car behind us with their wine, and <laughs> And the women are going, stop it, stop it. And, and, and my wife says those three words to you, who every husband wants to hear. Get off me. <laughs> so I get off, the Italian family, the, the grandmother's turning the heads of the children. And I'm struggling to put my trousers back on. And I never found out, we never found out, if this was a gag, if he would, if this travel agent did this on purpose, knew all along it wasn't 50 minutes, it was more like 15. 15 minutes, oh man. 15. <laughs> A lot happening in your world. You've got a new film. It just played at the London Film Festival as well, right? Last Flag Flying, yes. Yeah. And uh, what a cast. Uh, Steve Carell, Lawrence Fishburne, and yourself, directed by Richard Linklater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's that about? It is uh, a, a group of um, guys who knew each other in the war, in, in the Vietnam War. And this is now 30 years later. Um, there's a task that they, they have to do. And it, it, it's a film that really explores uh, male bonding, male friendship, the depth of which you feel like you're a friend to someone. It's very funny. It's very emotional. Yeah, we're very happy with it. Last, last Flag, flag Flying. We're yeah. looking forward to seeing that. And you can also see Brian in the flesh, live on stage in Network of the National Theatre from the 4th of November. Now, this is the, the stage adaptation of classic 1976. Right, Netflix 1976. Network. So how did this happen? How did you get involved in it? I was uh, shooting a movie here in London uh, a couple of years ago, and I had lunch with Ivo Van Hove, who was our director. And... Uh, he said, the National is doing this movie uh, as an adaptation into a play. Would you be interested in playing this character? And his name is ha Howard Beale. And Howard Beale, is a, he spews this venom of uh, a very iconic line, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. And it, it has a lot of resonance in today's world, talking about fake news, uh, wrapping news in an entertainment package, and that sort of thing, and what is real, what is honest, how, what is our responsibility as, as news 
givers to be able to, you know, service the people and things like that. And in this version, is it all set in a restaurant? Or some of it's set in a restaurant? No. Um, Ivo van Hove is, uh, he's, he's uh, very interesting, very eclectic. And he, there's a couple scenes in a bar and a couple scenes in a restaurant. So he has decided to have a real restaurant and bar on stage with the actors eating and drinking while we are performing. So for a premium ticket, any person can be on stage eating and drinking, no and you way. are as close as I am. I'm, we're doing scenes. Incredible. Scene. What a mate, yeah. That's the chef's table. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? With it sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For everyone but the I'm people who are paying and are on the ticket. stage going. <laughs> yeah. I might come and see it then. And then oh, when you're, no. No, he is. When you've you're, got tickets, have you? Actually, I have actually got tickets. I'm not going to say when I'm coming, because I don't want one of these to rub my house, but I am... I am <laughs> take my tickets and come and sit in the restaurant but if I do I, forgive me because I might if I'm having a good conversation I might ask you to be quiet <laughs> excuse me I'm not trying to eat here <laughs> yeah. 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 can you just tone down for a second yeah. 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 and also if you're a slow eater the play might end yeah. <laughs> we haven't finished I'm so sorry yeah. we're not yeah. we're still here lights up <laughs> and when you're there Matt yes behave I will do. Why are you getting insinuated? Well, no, because Brian, he takes no prisoners. Oh, really? I would be very upset. Well, it's not. You might get some reviews. Yeah, that's right. yeah no, I was thinking I've been trying to get on at the National Theatre. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think there, there has been some poor behaviour in the theatre. Uh, was it in Broadway? Was it uh, all the way? Yeah, I was doing a play on Broadway, and uh, it's normal to see an audience um, go side to side as they're looking from one actor to, a, to another. Very natural. But what isn't natural is to see this happening. Mm. And that drew my attention. Yeah. There was a kid in the front row, one, one performance, uh, about 17. And I, he was doing this constantly. I don't know, what the hell is that? And I go over a little closer as I'm talking, <laughs> and I take a look. And he's on his phone. He's texting. He's like, da, 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 da. what's going on? Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm in a play. Uh, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> but, 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 just doing this. And I started to get angry. And, I, and I, I changed my blocking when I had a big speech that was full of bluster. And I know that there would be a certain amount of expectorant that would, oh, you would be expected. <laughs> I lined yeah. myself up right in it. And he was the target. Uh, and I was spewing, and, and he was like... <laughs> 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 well, I saw you in the West End, and because you're a movie star in a theatre, suddenly people have access to you. Are, were audiences kind of less respectful of that fourth wall? Or they... Um, well, I had to address the audience a lot in the play I was doing, so that was, you know, at first when I started, I was really... Um, I mean, my stage fright was, was a lot. But no, I, 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 I love doing the play because I got to interact yeah. with people. And, and but was there much filming and taking photographs and stuff? I have terrible eyesight, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't see distances very well. So that helped me. Everyone's blurry right now. Including us. Are we blurry to you right now? Uh, Matt's a little blurry. Matt's a little blurry. Well, that's, that's his natural... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that helps as an actor because it's all blurry yeah, and you yeah. can kind of create this world of, you know. Because, Matt, when you were doing stand-up, <laughs> I mean, that audience interaction is so kind of intense. It's terrifying, I mean, yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. And in, in your book, you, you uh, talk about a gig. I think, was he Irish, the guy in the audience? Oh, yeah. Well, was I, it Colin Farrell? I had <laughs> it. I must apologise if I am going to tell you about this because I can't really do an Irish accent very well. I can do three Irish accents badly. So I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. In the My ability's can... getting worse as well. Than I'm <laughs> yeah. I can do. I can do the really like you know the really old-fashioned sort of finny. Oh, hey, my leprechaun! I can do that. That's not very good. I can do. Uh, I can do. I was in boy zone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I can do that one. I don't know. I'm talking about, but it's Irish. <laughs> Yeah, I write about this in the book. So I, uh, I started doing stand-up comedy when I was 18 years old. And uh, one of my... It was quite early on. I was probably only about 19. <clears throat> and I was doing a gig, and there was a guy in the audience who was just heckling everybody, and every comic mm -hmm. was going down badly. And I realised, and it was... You know, I had this routine that I'd worked on, but I realised there was no way I would be able to do this routine. So I got up on stage, and instead... Um, 
I just made my entire routine that night about him. And I basically really humiliated him from the stage. <laughs> and the audience, I don't think I was particularly funny, but the audience, there was such relief because this guy had been terrorising every act on the bill, including the compare. Um, and if, if, if the compare can't control the room, you really are in trouble. And um, so I was there, and I was like the hero of the hour. But then when I got off stage, he came up to me, and he was about six foot five, and <laughs> he was this big, and he went, that was funny, that. That was really funny. <laughs> I'm going to take you outside, I'm going to beat the bollocks out of you. <laughs> and I went, oh, my gosh, it was just a joke. He went, no, I'm just playing with you, mate. I'm just with you. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> you me here in front of my wife. I'm going to take you outside and give you a taste of your own medicine. I went, oh, my God, no, I really, I was just mucking about. I was just, I was just, ah, I'm just joshing with you. And he just went back and forth. <laughs> and, forth. and I had to be escorted out of the venue. <laughs> the station. She's here tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, terrifying. Uh, that is one of the stories in your book, Matt Lucas, Little Me, My Life From... Now, I want to say A to Z, but it's A to Z. A to Z, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my autobiography, but I just... I tried to... My mind is all over the place, so I thought, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll just... I'll, I'll make it alphabetical. So, like, B is for baldness, G is for gay, J is for Jewish. But it is, it is my whole life and, and the work I've done and yeah. working with Nicole Kidman, who can't, doesn't know who I am because I'm blurry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hang on, let me just see. K, K, K. K. No, you're not in it, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in the next one. Uh, o is for Oh Look It's Thingy. Yeah, that's a chapter about. Here's the thing, right? I've done many wonderful projects in my life. <laughs> but the thing that most people ask me about is actually what it's like to be famous. That's what people. I mean, I don't feel famous on the, on the sofa with these, uh, you know, uh, icons here, but, but um, in Sainsbury's I'm famous. <laughs> So, it, you know, people ask me about, yeah, about, about what it's like. So I've written a whole chapter about what it's like to be a B-lister. Yeah. So, but you get, people, <laughs> you get people coming up, they do catchphrases. Yes. But often... Oh, sometimes the wrong ones. Yeah. <laughs> I get, I get uh, people come up to me a lot and go, are you bothered? Are you bothered? <laughs> so, I'm absolutely fine, dear, because it, you're actually mistaking me for Catherine Tate. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, and she gets people coming up to her going, no, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> do, you get mis do you get mistaken for people? Colin Firth. Do you? Yeah. Colin Firth? Yeah, who has me by an Oscar in at least 10 inches. And right. A lot, of, a lot of decorum, but, um, yeah. I signed up for a gym once, and, and the woman got on the phone, she said, I'm just going to sort out your membership, and you went, yeah, Colin Firth is here. <laughs> and then you said, put it on his, yeah, put it exactly. on my tab. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were telling me backstage that you you did your first one of those, was it a Comic-Con? Oh, I did a Comic-Con recently. I did, a, I did my first... Uh, signing convention uh, because I've just spent a year in Doctor Who as mm -hmm. a companion and so lots of people said please come and do a convention so I said alright I'll, I'll do a convention and the great thing about these conventions is people dress up as characters oh, yeah. that you've played and so uh, or, or just dress up as, as different sci-fi characters and different film characters and yeah so there was a lady next to me um, whose job was to sort of uh, hand me photographs to sign and, and, and stick the name of the person on a post-it note so I could sign and what have you and one guy came over uh, for an autograph and the woman next to me who worked for the convention said oh Oh, wonderful, you've come as Lou. Now, she meant Lou from Lou and Andy, you know, the character David yeah. played. And he went, no, I haven't. <laughs> and she said, yes, you have. Yeah, you've got the hair, the bad teeth, the glasses. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. And so I went, no, he, of course he hasn't. He's come as, who have you come as? He goes, I haven't come as anyone. <laughs> Yeah, it was, right. it was quite strange. And also, there was one guy who was really, really, really shaking when he came over to me. Oh and I thought, well, you know, I am an icon. And then, <laughs> and then he got down on one knee and proposed to his girlfriend in front of me. Oh. And then we saw the three of us did a photo. With, like, <laughs> but it was great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was Evidence, I really enjoyed this. These books Thank are you. hard to do, and I think you've done a great job. Thank you. Uh, Matt Lucas, Little Me, My Life from A to Z. Very good. Thank you. Uh, this Hollywood legend is a double Oscar winner, uh, producer, best-selling author, activist, and workout pioneer. It could only be the great Jane Fonda, everybody! <laughs> Join the 
show a lot. You all are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and I got. I'm so glad Lobster was mentioned because that's. I just. You were so good. Thank I you. love that movie so much. Thanks a minute. And then there's you. Congratulations for your Emmy. Aww. You were so brilliant in that show. Thanks. Big Little Lies. Yeah. yeah. the Emmys, talking of the Emmys, we just played the, the 9 to 5 music uh, when you came oh, yeah. on there. And at the Emmys, at the Emmys, it was so great to see the three of you back together again, yeah, yeah. Uh, reunited. Yeah. And the reaction on the night, I mean, did you, do you know people were going to go that crazy to see the three of you back together again? No, I never expected anything like that, but, but Dolly did. <laughs> Dolly did, right before, we, she said, we're going to get a standing O. <laughs> she was right. Yes, yeah. I've heard you talking about Dolly and the 9 to 5, mm -hmm. and it, that music, it sort of came later. It came sort of during the movie. Yeah, well, she arrived one day, and, you know, she has these... They're not real, if she'll tell you that. <laughs> that long nails, and she oh, said... Oh, nails! Sorry, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> and you said they weren't real. Sorry, I do apologize. I shouldn't have said anything at all. <laughs> yeah, there's the hair. There, yes. I wasn't thinking this, of the hair. This but... is real. Yeah, yeah. Is, yes. She likes to moon, also. We, we went drinking no one night, and we were driving home. Yeah, she, out the window. I'd have my iPhone on the window. Yes, yes, yes. No, but she arrived one day. Just, is, is that, are the tattoos, is that story real? I never saw any tattoos okay, on Dolly, no, no. But okay. she, she pulled Lily, and I, I produced the movie, so she pulled us over, and she said, I think I've found our song. And then she starts playing her nails like a washboard, and she started singing 9 to 5. And wow. Lily and I looked at each other, and our hair wow. was standing on end. Oh, wow. It became, it became the anthem of the movement. Yeah, yeah. it really did. Really did. Uh, now, Jane Fonda, you're in town for a very special event, an evening with Jane Fonda. With you. The, well, yes, that's embarrassing. That, that, that's <laughs> a, uh, at, it's at the Savoy this Sunday, and unfortunately, I am doing the interview. But there will be a Q&A with the audience, where you'll get some decent questions. Uh, <laughs> now, because you have this enormous back catalogue of films, are there films I should avoid? Are there movies you don't enjoy talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I won't even tell you what came into my mind. No, I don't care what you... I'm prepared for anything. But what about, for instance, what about... I burned all the ones my husband made. <laughs> 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 but, but, well, Bob Ellen was made by a husband, and you didn't like that film, but you've sort of made your peace with it now. Yeah, our marriage was falling apart. He was directing the movie, and I had to do all these things, like I had to be shut into a bird cage and have birds pooping on me and picking at me, and, you know, I mean... You probably, we've all done move, oh, him. Oh, I like birds you pooping didn't. on me. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps coming back to the pink eye. You know, when I see some, <laughs> some of the things people do now in movies, it feels like it was really nothing. But it, it was not an easy movie to do. But then years later, when I had a sense of humor again, it took a while. <laughs> I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was, you know, it was kind of campy and fun. Yeah. And I suppose now, because of your body of work, you know, people say Jane Fonda, they think, you know, serious. She's old. <laughs> no. After a while. <laughs> Are we allowed and to say the December birthday? Of course. It's the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. It's December 21st. And you will be? Oh, I'll be 80. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Be working at my age. I know, I'm working a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Grace, Grace and Grace. such a fun thing. Wonderful. Grace and Frankie. Oh, that wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Making vibrators for older women with arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and recently you were just reunited with uh, Robert Redford, also on Netflix. In uh, it's, You have to be careful how you say it. Our Souls. <laughs> In our oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure the audience tested our that souls. title. <laughs> our, 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 our souls, souls. at night. <laughs> oh <laughs> but, my God! But well, you, you yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome, Jay. <laughs> But well, you first worked with Robert Redford nearly 60 years ago when you yes, worked with him. Yeah. What an amazing. Thing. It's like bookends of your life. You know, in the beginning of our movies together, we checked into a hotel as newlyweds who hadn't done it yet. And at the end of our careers, we're making, well, no, my career is going to keep going, but his won't. <laughs> <laughs> 
at the end of his career, <laughs> we do a movie where we're checking into a hotel to do it for the first wow. time. No way. Oh, yeah, oh, and I, while we were shooting the scene, I thought, this feels familiar. Hey, Bob, you remember? No, we didn't remember. <laughs> I mean, it's after he is stopping now. That's what he says. But he won't read. Well, he should. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. He's too old. <laughs> <laughs> Women last longer. We do, don't we? Yeah. I mean, we you look know, closer. Yes, we do. I just we love this leave. woman. I think I bow it. You're, she, you are so talented. Uh, oh, oh, but I, I've studied everything. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, you're lucky because anyone who can go hear her talk, because you'll hear stories oh, about thank you. Clute and come on, I I could do the I could do the you could do my stories. Oh, I would love yeah. to talk. To you you do my stories, I'll play your roles. <laughs> <laughs> you from the back, naked and eyes wide shut. <laughs> I have froze frame. <laughs> Whatever I thought you were going to say, it wasn't that. <laughs> but now, I don't, it's very rare that this happens on the sofa, and I don't know if any of you... Have any of you been arrested? <laughs> oh, you have! Oh, oh, briefly, I knew briefly, it. sister. Yeah. <laughs> for same, not for the same noble reasons that you were. <laughs> but I've never seen your mugshot. Is there a mugshot of you somewhere? No, the lads didn't have film in the camera. <laughs> Back in the day, I spent, I spent one night in the clanger and that was it. Oh, right. Drunken issue. Uh, because your, I love your mugshot, I mean, you oh. really, you use this mug. I mean, you sell it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And yeah. you, you sell the picture on, you do mug, mug T-shirts, mugs. <laughs> mugshot. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. amazing. I mean, I it's like an actor's headshot. Yeah, yeah, that's a clever but, but the, What I like is that the fist bump is, is also because... Well, see, I'm double-jointed, so they put the handcuffs on, but I can slip right out. <laughs> And why, why were you arrested? Oh God! Oh, because Nixon had it out for me, and um, oh, wow. he—they had me. I was flying in from Canada, and they had me stopped at the airport. The arresting officer told me it was orders from the White House. And in those days, I used to take a lot of vitamin pills, and they were all in little plastic envelopes marked BLD, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they said I was smuggling drugs. It took a month for them to, you know, to find out that they were vitamins. But I was told it was Nixon. Wow. And uh, just one, one last story before we end. Uh, Jane Fonda, clearly a formidable woman, a Thank businesswoman, you. actress, activist. Tell us the story about uh, babysitting your grandson in a, in a cabin. Oh, the bear? Yes. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't even married to him. <laughs> he came into my room. I was... I was my a proper bear. My proper bear. My grandson was in a crib in the corner. It was a cabin. It was a tiny cabin. And, and a bear came through the screen door and um, walked right towards the crib, and I knew what to do. <laughs> what you do when a bear comes into your room is you open whatever you have on and you roar. Do you want me to do it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> on my antique rug oh. <laughs> and then turned around and walked to where the hole in the screen door was and sat down and I pushed it <laughs> through the door. It felt so... I'd never touched a bear before. And, and slammed... Anyway, that's my bear story. Well, I, what an amazing grandmother. <laughs> stories, but that's the best one. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. And Jane Fonda, everybody. Right, it's uh, time for music. Uh, this man was a member of the biggest boy band in the world and is now a chart-topping solo artist singing Too Much to Ask. This is Niall Horan. <laughs> Yesterday we were on the run You smiled back at me And your face lit up the sun Now I'm waiting here for someone And oh, love Do you feel this rough? Why is it only you I'm thinking of? My shadows dancing without you for the first time. My heart is open and walk right in soon. Now to tell me there are things that you regret. Cause if I'm being honest, I ain't over you yet. That's all I'm asking. Is it 
Some people it doesn't suit. I like it. I'm 24. I hear you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> all the, you know, good friends are all the band and stuff, so I'm sure it'll be a good crack. Yeah, and, but you're playing massive venues, aren't you? Everywhere, all over Europe, all over the States, South America, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, well, so it's gone as well as it possibly could have. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, you don't know what it's going to be like. You know. Um, obviously, there was fans there from One Direction and stuff, but it's been it's nice to. To have seen new fans come along with this this kind of music that I've been making, and uh, yeah, it's just been it's been a nice experience so far. How do you describe you. The, the music you're making now? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I, well, I'm heavily influenced by like bands like Fleetwood Mac, uh, the Eagles, and oh, good. I grew up listening to a lot of Jackson Brown, Crosby, Stills and Nash. Oh. So a lot of the rest of the album is kind of down that, and obviously being from Ireland comes with a lot of singer songwriters. So and soul. That's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, in there somewhere. You yeah. should write a song called Arseholes of the Night." <laughs> And, and the tour. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks so for having me again. Success. Now listen, uh, that is it for tonight. I'm afraid. No time for red chairs. So, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so please say a huge thank you to my guest, Niall Horan. <laughs> Jared Butler and Jeff Goldblum and former U.S. Senator and presidential candidate Hillary Rodham Clinton. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.
Keep it here for comedy with Josh. Another career disaster looms. Owen is dating pop star Diana Vickers and Kate just can't keep her cool. Next here on BBC One.